Hello and welcome to part 5 of Sonic 3 and Knuckles in the Knuckles playthrough. We've reached the boss of uh, Launch Base Zone, folks. And it's the same thing that starts off when Sonic fights him on the Death Egg. As you can see, there's no Death Egg to fight on because it's been destroyed at this point. It takes place after Sonic's story, so go figure. Knuckles doesn't fight the Cannonball boss, which is kind of disappointing, but whatever. Uh, this boss is pretty much the same, except I think the ball spike appears to move a lot more faster than it does when you're fighting a Sonic. At least I jumped into that ball spike way too much when I was playing as Knuckles. And yeah, I died three times. <laughs> I edited those deaths out, unfortunately. I don't know what happened there. I don't know how I missed Egg Robo here. But anyway, folks, this is actually new to you because this was not fought in the Sonic and Tails playthrough. This is the final boss of standalone Sonic the Hedgehog 3. But in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, they cut this boss fight out for some reason, unless you're playing as Knuckles. So this is the boss you would fight if you were playing standalone Sonic 3. This will be in an extra video, because I'm going to be showing the Sonic 3 endings. And, uh, yeah. Basically, he's kind of a dick boss, because it still takes 8 hits to kill him. If he grabs you with his arms, he will fucking power bomb you, and you'll get hurt, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't jump on top of him, because there's spikes on top of him, obviously. So you have to dodge the hands, dodge the spikes, make sure you hit the front of his cockpit, and that's the only way to damage him. It's kind of easy with Knuckles since he can glide, but uh, Sonic and Tails have to make precise jumps. Also, when you're playing as Knuckles, he takes four passes left and right, and when you're playing as Sonic and Tails in the Sonic 3 standalone final battle, he only takes two passes, making the boss fight significantly bigger. So Knuckles gets a shorter, quicker boss fight, I suppose. And booyah! I still don't know how I missed him that first that first glide. <laughs> Not that it matters. So yeah, that's a new boss fight, and you saw it if you played standalone Sonic 3 by itself and uh, beat the game. The more you know. Jesus, egg robo! What now? Oh, another bomb! Oh, fucking Christ! <laughs> So Knuckles finds himself falling into Mushroom Hill, again, the first level of Sonic and Knuckles. And just like the Sonic and Tails playthrough, you'll find yourself immediately running into a special stage right off the bat. And uh, the difference is, when you were Sonic and Tails, you saw Knuckles looking suspicious, and then he just left, and you unlocked this hidden room that he tried to hide, and then you got the special stage. In the Knuckles playthrough, you just sort of just run into it for no reason. <laughs> And if you're playing standalone Sonic and Knuckles, obviously you would never have found that special stage because you start the, the map a lot farther in and you can't go back for some reason. So yeah, that's an easy special stage, can't miss it. And if you do, well, what the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck? I'm gonna get the same Super Emeralds I did in Sonic's playthrough here, even though I have to take a small backtrack detour at the start of Act 2, but you'll see what I'm talking about later. Uh, this level's pretty fun, though. Knuckles' wall climbing ability helps you find a lot of hidden pathways, and... That's a great thing about... When I first tested out Sonic and Knuckles, of course, I immediately... I didn't lock it on to Sonic 2, I didn't lock it on to Sonic 3, but I immediately just put in the game into my cousin Sega Genesis, and... Of course I picked Knuckles. Who the fuck else was gonna pick Sonic? No one picks Sonic when they start this game. They pick Knuckles, because they gotta see how awesome this guy is. Don't know why I jumped into those spikes, but, uh... Anywho, the gliding and the wall climbing had my... I, I remember playing Mushroom Hill for, like, six minutes straight, just one act, just climbing all over the place, seeing how high I could get, seeing all the different pathways I could find. That's the cool thing about, about being Knuckles or Tails. You find yourself looking for areas, hopefully finding special stages and whatnot, you know? When you get the Super Emeralds, you automatically lose the Chaos Emeralds, so I won't be turning Super anymore. I will be turning into Hyper Knuckles if I get the rest of the Super Emeralds, but uh, that won't be for a while. As it is though, Mushroom Hill is pretty much the basic, uh, the same Mushroom Hill that Sonic and Tails had to play through. You're not seeing anything completely different. But oh well, now you get to see the Red Echidna gliding and climbing all over the place. That's always awesome. Now where was I? Because I remember I was talking about the 3D Sonic games, and now that we're in an area that we've already seen before, I think I should get back to that. Shadow the Hedgehog, while I hated the darker tone of the story and I hated how edgy it was trying to be, I still liked 
the gameplay. I thought the inclusion of guns, while edgy and n unnecessary for Shadow's character, I still thought, like, the gunplay was a neat mechanic, because after Sonic Heroes, the Sonic 3D series had this stupid knack of giving every enemy in the fucking game a health bar. You know, I can understand with Sonic Heroes, because you had the power-type character, and he had to be the one that took out those health bar heavy guys really quickly. And with Shadow, it became necessary because that encouraged you to pick up guns and to pick up different ability, like different weapons to use on the monsters or the robots or the humans. As you can see there, I plowed through the wall instead of being shot up with the wind like uh, in the Sonic playthrough, because obviously I'm Knuckles and I control the wind. <laughs> Here you find a nice gliding section. So in order to get to the special stage uh, that I, I went to with Sonic, I have to get a little far in the level, and then I have to backtrack left to find it again. That's why I'm going left. That's why I'm looking for the special stage that you get with Sonic. Because again, I, I don't know where many special stages are with Knuckles. The Lava Reef special stages that I always get with Sonic, you can't reach them with Knuckles. At least one you can, but you have to go out of your way to find it. And I never usually go out of my way to get it, so yeah. I don't know what the hell hit me there. I think it was a mushroom. So yeah, I wanted to reach this pit. Booyah! Now we reach the special stage. But anyway, Shadow's gunplay was actually a, a neat mechanic, I thought. It was kind of annoying how you had to stop to pick up the weapons. But then again, Shadow wasn't really much of a speedy type experience. With the way the missions were set up, you had to look all over the place to hit every enemy in the game. Because the way Shadow has missions, it's like, in order to do the Dark Side mission, you have to hit every cop in the city. Every single cop. It's not like they gave you 50 cops and then said, kill 30 of them. They said, no, you've got 50 cops, kill all 50. And that gets really annoying real fast in Shadow, I will admit, because you miss one cop. You miss one cop when you're looking all over that place, and you have to backtrack and look for him again, and it gets frustrating. I'm not going to lie. Shadow's not a great game by any means, but I still thought it was kind of fun. Sonic 06! Oh god, do I even have to say anything? If you think Shadow's the worst game, no. Sonic 06 is the worst. It is by far ten times worse. Shadow the Hedgehog was the first game to get universally panned by critics. And I can see why, but I still enjoyed the game as sort of a guilty pleasure. I still thought it was fun to play. Sonic 06 is what cemented Sonic's bad reviews so far uh, since uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, because that game's just a train wreck. Also, hidden path over here. You can crush through the wall this time, so, booyah. <laughs> but yeah, Sonic 06 is a train wreck, and I think you know my opinion on that if you've seen any of my other videos, but I'll be sure to make a review of it when uh, we get to that point in the LP timeline. Why not? Sonic and the Secret Rings, I know it's the first Wii Sonic game. It was the first time they tried to use the Wii motion controls and stuff, but that game was horribly designed, and I didn't like Secret Rings either. I don't know what the hell they were thinking with the controls, especially backing up and shit. Like, backing up was such a chore. You have to tilt the Wiimote backwards, and you can't see where you're going when you do this, and doing certain missions was just a pain in the ass and the Wii motion controls really made that game awkward, as well as the mission structure. You always did, like, these these 20 second missions, and then every now and then you get one long level mission, and you just kept replaying the same level, but with, like, different missions and stuff, and the cutscenes were boring, because they were told as a storybook, but, like, <laughs> like a non-color storybook, if you know what I mean. It was just so blah, 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 and the worst travesty of all is, like, there's a level up system. You get upgrades in Sonic and the Secret Rings. But the default, right from the get-go, start the game Sonic, is so fucking slow that anyone who wanted a fast game when they picked it up, they were horribly disappointed when they popped it into their Wii. But I digress, we'll continue the speech later. Egg Robo, he's using the same machine that Eggman did. Uh, the only difference I find with this boss fight this time around is that sometimes the logs have two ball spikes, and you have to jump in between them, like that one that I just jumped over. That's the only difference I find, honestly. He still uh, shoots his flamethrowers, he still dips back and forth, you still jump over it and hit him, and yeah. Nothing real different about this boss fight. Egg Robo's still a bitch. You can still take him out like nothing. So, haha! -ha! <laughs> and that would be Mushroom Hill. I got the same special emeralds that I did with Sonic, and it was pretty much the same pathway, except for a few minor details.
And once again, we got a big flying battleship circling above us. Guess we're going to the flying battery zone next in part six. See you then.